Come home to Jesus. This is the message that Max Solbrecken has proclaimed for 50 years to multitudes across the world. His crusades have taken him to the Hindus of India, Muslims of Pakistan, Buddhists of Sri Lanka, voodoo worshippers of Haiti, Catholics of Malta, and headhunters of northern Luzon. He has preached God's Word in stadiums, churches, tents, universities, and prisons. He comes to you today with the message of God's love and power. The man who is not afraid to preach the truth, Pastor Max Solbrecken. I'm going to share a special message this morning that I believe will touch your heart. For all the folks here at the House of Prayer, I was 623, saw the new disruptor in Alberta, Canada. And those who hear this on the YouTube somewhere across the world. I'm going to speak on the subject, his life for mine, my life for him. We're turning to Ephesians chapter 1. And I wish to read from verse number 1 to 7 as follows in Jesus' name. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace of God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings, with all spiritual blessings, what a tremendous statement. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Now that's quite a truth, isn't it? Chosen in him, before the foundation of the world. God knew about us then. Before the worlds were created, God knew about us and chose us that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto himself according to the good pleasure of his will. It's according to the good pleasure of his will that we be here this morning in the house of God, that we be serving the Lord and witnessing for him. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. To be accepted in the beloved, in Christ, God has accepted us in his son, the beloved. Sometimes people come and they say, nobody cares about me. They won't accept me. But God accepts us. God accepts us in the beloved, in him. Hallelujah. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Oh, what powerful statements here that Paul wrote to the Ephesian church. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the disposition of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. An inheritance. We have a great inheritance waiting for us, being predestinated according to the working of all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory. We are to be the, to the praise of his glory. When people hear us, see us, and know what we're doing, that brings glory to God, our testimony. 
that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Sealed. When something is sealed, it's difficult to break that seal. We were sealed, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you. Paul is saying, every time I think about you, the Ephesian church, I give thanks for you. Shall we bow, please, for prayer? Father, I pray now, in the name of Jesus, that your hand of mercy will be stretched out to the multitudes across the world who may be listening on the YouTube today. I pray, Father, it will touch all of us here. We pray for Alberta. We pray for Nur Shrepta and the area. We pray for this Great nation of ours, Canada, we pray a blessing upon Canada. We pray this for Christ's sake and for God's glory with much thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated, please. I want you to speak on his life for mine. And there's an old hymnal, and I'm glad we have this hymnal here. Because in my message, God spoke to me to share something from this hymnal. And it's the song, I Gave My Life for Thee. You can find this song in the Lutheran hymnal, 405. And uh, the worship, His Majesty, 590. And this was written by Francis R. Havergal in, I believe it was something like 1586. And uh, it's so touching. His life for mine, my life for him. And I want to just read this song. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed that thou might ransom be and quicken for the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? This is Christ now. Say, my Father's house of light, my glory circled throne. I left for earthly night, for wandering sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee. Has thou left aught for me? Verse 3. I suffered much for thee, more than my tongue could tell. Of bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I've borne, I've borne it all for thee. What hast thou borne for me? Verse 4. And I have brought to thee, down from my home above, salvation full and free. My pardon and my love. I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee. What hast thou brought to me? As a boy in the Lutheran church in Saskatchewan, we sang this a lot. I gave my life for thee. It would touch my heart. Many of the great hymns that were written were written by people who really knew God. And when you read what they wrote and sing it, it touches your heart. Nearly every hymn that was written by these great men and women of God is an altar song. It's a sermon and an altar song. And we, every Sunday morning, there was always an altar call in the hymn we sang. The preacher didn't need to make an altar call. The Holy Spirit touched you from his message. When they would sing this hymn, suddenly you'd feel like 
coming to Christ. His life for mine, my life for him. Ephesians, let me go back to Ephesians 1 again. It says that we were chosen. He has chosen us. To be chosen is something special. To be chosen by Almighty God, it says here, according as he hath chosen us, verse 4, in him, before the foundation of the world, before the world that was ever created, God chose us to be his children. It is so precious. And that's not all. But it says we were predestinated. Verse 5. Predestinated unto the adoption of children. So we were predestinated and we were adopted. Almighty God adopted every single one of us as his children. And it says that he gives us wisdom. It's so powerful. Gives us wisdom and prudence. Verse 8. Where he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. To abound towards you means he rushes towards us to give us wisdom and prudence to be intelligent in him to have this great knowledge to be prudent to know how to conduct our lives he wants us to have it so badly that he abounds towards us he's rushing towards us to give us his grace and his mercy and his love and his wisdom and his knowledge and then it says we were redeemed Oh, this is powerful. Verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Redemption to be purchased. I mean, something that's valuable is purchased. You don't purchase junk. You don't purchase something that is useless. You purchase something that's valuable. So we are valuable to God. He values us. Others may not care about us or feel we are worth much, but to God we are very valuable. That he purchased us. With what? His own son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through might be saved. St. John 3, 16 to 17. So we were purchased by the blood of his own son. How much God cared for us. It's amazing, is it not? What God has done. And there's an inheritance waiting for us. St. Peter says the inheritance, it doesn't Diminish. No one can steal it. It's there for us. Inheritance undefiled. No lawyer, no crooked judge can say you can't have it. Inheritance in him. It's all in him. Hallelujah. And then that's not all, but we're sealed. He says we're sealed. Sealed. Sealed how? By the Holy Spirit. Sealed and inheritance, verse 11, predestinated, this great purpose. And then we have this great sealing, verse 13, in whom he also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit, which is the earnest, just a little taste of the inheritance. A little taste of the inheritance, hallelujah. Which is the earnest, the down payment on the real thing. 
Hallelujah. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a little taste of what we will have up in glory when we are seated with him in heavenly places. It tears me to pieces. It's so wonderful. It's just we are sealed. You know, my mother did a lot of canning. And then living on the farm, you canned so many things that during the wintertime, you could open those jars and they were all sealed. And you'd hear that puff, puff. If that puff was not there, you wouldn't eat it. It would be spoiled. Sealed. And it says you were sealed until, until the day of redemption. Until the day of redemption were sealed. No one can break that seal except yourself. Jesus said, no man can take you out of my Father's hand. No one can take you, can remove you out of the Father's hand. There's only one way that you can lose out, and that's to voluntarily walk away from the inheritance. Even if you're weak, even if you're struggling, God will be there to lift you up. Because we have been called for the foundations of the world before the world was made. And then there's the mystery of his will. Let's go. He talks here about the mystery also. The mystery of his, of his great pleasure. The mystery of his will. But let's go to Colossians, and then we'll find him speak about the mystery of the ages. The mystery of the ages, something that was hidden away, that nobody knew about, that God kept to himself. And it's in Colossians 1 and 25. Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and generations but now is made manifest to his saints. What is that mystery? We'll find out in a moment. But God had a secret that he never told anyone for thousands and thousands of years. In the councils of heaven, the mystery in the Godhead, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there was an agreement made, a covenant, the blood covenant made before the foundations of the world. Hallelujah. What is that mystery? He never told Moses. He never told Abraham. He didn't tell anyone, but he gave it to Paul. He gave the mystery to Paul. And here it is. Even the mystery. Verse 26. Which has been hid from ages and from generations. But now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known. What is the riches of the glory. Of this mystery. Among the Gentiles. Here it is. Christ in you the hope of glory. Here's the mystery. That God would put his, himself within us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the mystery. That God lives in you and me. And every believer. That he would put his Holy Spirit within us. Always in the Old Testament, the Spirit came upon the prophets. And they prophesied. But it says, I'll put my spirit within you. And the Holy Spirit. That's a part of the mystery. And the rest is, is not just for the Jews, it's for the Gentiles also. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Which is Christ in you, hope of glory. 
whom we preach, warning every man, teaching every man, in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect under Christ Jesus. So we preach, we warn every man, we teach every man, and we present every man to Christ. We win a soul, we teach the soul, we, we win him, we teach him, and we send him. Win a soul, teach a soul, send a soul. To win, win another soul, teach another soul, send another soul. That's the gospel. The mystery of the ages that God kept that secret all those thousands of years. And then to a little Jew who happened to be at one time a terrorist, Saul of Tarshish. And Jesus came and met him on that, on that road, Damascus Road. All of a sudden, a great light shined and everyone fell to the ground. And Saul heard the voice of God. Saul, 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 why do you persecute me? Saul, Saul, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I'm Messiah. I'm Messiah Jesus. I'm the Lord Jesus Christ. I am your Savior and your Deliverer. What do you want me to do? The greatest question you would ever ask, what do you want me to do, Lord? Who are you? What do you want from me? <laughs> Glory to God. Who are you, Lord? Get to know Jesus. And then ask him, what do you want me to do? Once you get to know him, then you'll want to serve him, won't you? In the book of Galatians, it says, we are crucified with Christ. This is such a powerful scripture. Galatians 2 and verse number 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Martin Luther was walking down the street one day and someone tapped him in the chest and said, Martin Luther, how are you today? How is Martin Luther? He said, Jesus in me is very fine. <laughs> Jesus in me. He said, Jesus is fine. By the grace of God, through faith in Christ, Christ in you, in the hope of glory. One day Martin Luther is sitting there and he's working away, translating the Bible, I guess, or whatever he was doing, and knock on the door. He opens the door, and there's that devil standing there. And Martin Luther says, What do you want? He said, I'm looking for Martin Luther. He doesn't live here anymore. What do you mean? Are you not Martin Luther? So he quotes the scripture. I am crucified with Christ. <laughs> Nevertheless, I live yet than I. Yet than I. It's Christ. Christ lives within me. And now be gone. Take a powder. Pew, he was gone. I am crucified with Christ. When Christ died, I died. Because my sins were on him. He was representing me on that cross. And you, your sins were there. He was dealing with your sins, so you had to be there. Because he was your substitute 
and mine. When Christ died, I died. When Christ was buried, I was buried with him through baptism. Buried through baptism with him. When he arose, I arose. When you come out of that baptismal tank, you're a candidate for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and power. When he arose, we arose. We're seen with him today. Right now we are with him in heavenly places. We're here, but yet we're up there. Seated with Christ in heavenly places. And when he comes again, we'll come with him. Oh, when he gets on that white horse, rides across the Kidron Valley, down to the Battle of Armageddon, plains of Megiddo, we'll come riding with him. When he comes and he drives that, he rides that white charger across from the Mount of Olives, his feet will stand there and it'll split in two. He'll ride across the Kidron Valley and there the eastern gate will open for him. He'll sit, eat bread, We'll be with him. Then when he rides out to face the Antichrist, he'll destroy the Antichrist with the breath of his mouth. Wow. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. 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 Let me go on to Revelation 5. Fifth chapter of the Revelation. And I saw on the right hand of him the sat on the throne, a book written within on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the, the book, neither to look thereon, and I wept much. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood the lamb. Stood the lamb. As it had been slain. The lamb had been slain, but he was standing. He was alive again. The lamb had been butchered. Slain. But the lamb was now alive, standing. Of course, the lamb is Jesus. <laughs> Having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. Sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book. Out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book. The four beasts of the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb. Having every one of them harps and golden vows. Full of incense. Which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song saying. Thou art worthy to take the book. To open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain. And has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. I read where Martin Luther said, we are kings and priests. Wow, that shook me. He said, we are kings and priests. <laughs> Even now. Good old Luther. And has made us under our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts of the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. 
Sing with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing in every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 19. Come with me to Revelation 19. Let me read. Verse 1. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and had avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God. They sat on the throne saying, Amen. Alleluia. And the voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia. Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. The marriage of the Lamb has come. His wife hath made herself ready. The marriage of the Lamb. Oh, bless it. Hallelujah. And her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. He said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren. And have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw the heavens open, and behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true. In righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes was a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven fought him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth go the sharp sword. The way that he should smite the nations, he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He treaded the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing on the sun. He cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowl that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together under the supper of of the great gods. Verse number 19. I saw the beast. And the kings of the earth. And their armies. Gathered together during war. Against him who sat on the horse. And against his army. And the beast was taken. With him the false prophet. That wrought miracles before him. With which he deceived them. Which received the mark of the beast. And them that worshipped his image. 
These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with a sword. Of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Verse number 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Verse 11. I saw a great white throne, him that sat upon it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. (laughs) Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Just before I close, I want to read something from Luke. He gave himself for me. Am I willing to give myself for him? That's a question. Let's go to Luke's gospel. The ninth chapter of St. Luke. And let's go to 57. And it came to pass that a certain man said to him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes of holes and birds of the air of nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. He said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus saith unto him, Let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Another said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first, let me first bid them farewell, which are home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of heaven. And no man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Once you put your hand on the plow, don't turn to look back. When I first was converted and I read this, it scared. It scared me. It stirred me. Once you make a decision, that's it. There's no turning back. You don't turn back. Let me first go and say farewell. Let me first bury my dad. It was a custom that the eldest person in the home could not leave home until he had buried his father. It was the duty of the eldest son to bury the father. He had to stay home. Jesus said, it's okay. Let someone else bury them, your father. You go and preach. Go and preach. In Mark's gospel, again, the eighth chapter, and verse number 34, and when he called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said to them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. 
But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Jesus, come unto me, all you labor and are heavy laden. Now we'll give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. He said, Behold, I stand at the door. A knock. If any man will hear my voice. If any man will hear my voice and open the door. I'll come in. I'll sup with him. And he with me. Hallelujah. His life for mine. My life for him. Galatians 1 and 4, it says, He gave Himself for us. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, He gave Himself for us. What are we willing to do for Him? Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you that your word is plain. I thank you that you don't mince any words and you don't come with a message that is not understood easily. You speak plainly. You say, come unto me. Take up your cross and follow me. If any man will hear my voice, take up your cross Follow me. Come unto me. Let me come in. Let me come in. In Christ, for Christ, by Christ, through Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We are in Christ. He's in us. That's so important to know that we are in Christ. If he's in you, then you are spirit-filled. You are filled with his power. You have the ability, if you have allowed him to come into you, but you must allow him to come into you. And if you do, he will be with you. Forever. John's Gospel 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. In my Father, in me, I in you. And he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he that is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Verse 23. Jesus answered and said, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we, my Father and I, will come unto him, make our abode with him. He's in us. He's in us, and we're in him. You can't separate us. 
in the 17th chapter of St. John, Jesus in his high priestly prayer talks to his heavenly father about us. Verse 3, and this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And this is, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He talks about his disciples. I have given them your word. I pray that not that you take them out of this world, but that you keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them, make them holy through the truth. Thy word is truth. And as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe. Oh, this is so strong. Let me go back to verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Make them holy through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them, his disciples, us into the world. And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through the word. That's us today. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. That the world may believe that I am the Son of God that the world may believe that I am truly the Messiah. Let my disciples be like me to do my works as I have done them. That when they see them, they will believe in me. I mean, that's powerful, isn't it? That I am one with God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. That's powerful. That's big. That's enormous, isn't it? Hallelujah. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all until Jesus comes. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. Be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The Lord strengthen thee. The Lord protect thee, prosper thee, fill thee with great joy, even unto the coming of the Lord. Amen. For 50 years, Pastor Max Solbrecken has awakened the conscience of his audiences through the anointed proclamation of the claims of Christ who said, No man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. The truth is, you are either for him or against him. You cannot remain neutral. Great costs are involved in spreading of Christ's gospel. Please consider investing in this ministry. Contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM Box 44220 RPO Garside, Edmonton, Alberta. T5V1N6 Canada. You have been watching the Come Home to Jesus television ministry with Canada's preacher man, Dr. Max Solbrecken, who has proclaimed the Word of God across the world for 50 years without fear or favor of man or devil. Ask for Canada's revival magazine, The Cry of His Coming, when you write. Invest in souls by supporting this end time ministry. Please contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM Box 44220, RPO Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. 